In today's video I'm going to show you how to make one of these lovely little bags. This was made out of all scrap pieces of fabric. So all the offcuts of fabric that I've had over the past few months, well not all of them, there's plenty left, but I made this bag out of some of them. So let's get started. You will need offcuts of fabric, two pieces of lining fabric, 10 inches by 8 inches, two pieces of either batting, cotton batting or cotton interfacing or fusible fleece, 10 inches by 8 inches, an 8 inch zip and two pieces of fabric, 2 inches by 2 inches. If you are using fusible fleece, you will also need a lining for this. This I'm calling, calling the lining for your patchwork, but if you're using batting or wadding, you won't need this. If you are using fusible fleece, fuse two pieces of fusible fleece to your lining for your patchwork. Following the manufacturer's instructions, mine says that I should put a cotton cloth over mine when ironing. If you are using cotton wadding or batting, you won't need to line this, so you can just sew your patchwork pieces straight onto it, which means you can skip this step and go straight onto the next one. Cut your offcuts of fabric into strips two and a half inches wide. They can be up to eight inches long. You can cut all of the strips eight inches long and just have strips across your bag, or you can do it in a brickwork effect by doing one row with eight inches and then the next row you'll cut four and a half, two four and a half inch ones and then back to eight and then two four and a half inch ones or a little bit random as I have done. Place your strips on your fleece to work the pattern out that you would like. You can keep moving them around until you get the right pattern for you. Before I sew my pieces together I've just marked a quarter of an inch seam allowance on each one just so I get a nice straight line. This isn't essential but you can do it if it helps you. And then I pin them all together. And then I sew all of my strips together taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance remembering to back tack at the start and the finish. Continue sewing all of your pieces together until you have enough to cover the front and the back panel of your bag. Next press all of the seams open. I finger press them first and then go over with my iron. So do this to all of the strips for both sides of your bag. Now take the piece of fabric that you interfaced earlier and trim off any excess fleece or interfacing. Then place your first strip over the interfacing right side up and trim any excess off of your strip. Then pin in place. Now you can attach your first strip, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and back tacking at the start and the finish, sew across the top edge. Now take your second strip and lay this face down over the first, so right sides together and we're going to pin along the bottom edge. Take over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along the bottom edge of this strip where we've pinned, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and the finish. Please note that the strips may appear different on each of my steps. That's because I was making two bags as we went along, not just one. So please ignore the difference in the patchwork strips. I should also point out that I made one bag with fusible fleece and the other with interfacing, just so you know, but all the steps are exactly the same, whichever you decide to use. Now pin the third strip of fabric to your bag. Again, we're placing it right, um, right sides facing, so place on top of the strip you've already done with the right sides together and pin along the bottom end all the way to the end, ready for sewing. You'll notice that my strips are overhanging my fusible fleece. You can trim these off as you go along or you can wait till the end and trim them all off at once. It's up to you. Attach the third piece to your bag panel, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and the finish. Continue pinning and sewing until you've filled both of your panels. Remember you've got two panels to do, not just the one. The next step is to make tabs for our zip. These are not essential, but they do make your bag zip area look a lot neater, so I would recommend doing them. 
First mark off your half an inch seam allowance on each side of your first bag panel. Then use these two marks as a guide to mark off the length of your zip. So transfer the marks from the bag to your zip so you have the correct length of zip. And cut your zip at the marks you've just made, making your zip the correct length for your bag. And make sure you don't use your best fabric scissors for this job. Place one of the zip tabs over the zip at one end with right sides facing. Then fold both the sides over to the centre and they should almost meet in the centre. Clip or pin each side in place. Then do exactly the same to the other end. I've saved the zip end, the zip opening end till last in. It's a little bit more tricky, so make sure you get the centre of the zip both sides together before you pin or clip and then fold each side over as before and possibly put three clips or pins in this side rather than just the two. Sew across the top of each end of the zip taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and back tacking at the start and the finish. Next job is to turn the fabric the right way out. So do the same at each end and then finger press each of the sides down. Then I fold the top over twice. I find it's a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut a little bit off each end just to make it the right length. And then I'm going to try again. So fold it over once, fold it over twice, and there we are, perfect. Put a clip on each side, and then do exactly the same at the other end. Now top stitch across the end of each tab on each side, staying as close to the edge as you can. I also made my strap out of leftover pieces of fabric. They were two and a half inches wide and varying lengths. I clipped them all together before sewing. I took a quarter inch seam allowance and back tacked at each end and kept going till I had a whole length of scrap pieces of fabric sewn together to make one long length 44 inches long and two and a half inches wide. I then pressed all of the seams open. I finger pressed them first and then used my iron to just press over and I went all the way along the whole length. However, if you wanted to and you wanted one plain colour for your strap, you could just cut one piece of fabric 44 inches long and two and a half inches wide. To make the strap, fold the fabric in half lengthways and then fold the sides into the centre mark you've just made. So we make a mark by folding it in half and then we fold each side into the centre. And then we fold it over again, forming our strap. Continue folding in half and then folding the sides in and then folding that in half and clipping all the way till you get to the end of the strap. Now take over to your sewing machine and starting with a back tack, so all the way down one side, taking about an eighth of an inch. So you're going to sew an eighth of an inch from the edge, very carefully sewing. You can go as slow as you like, there's no rush. Just make sure you get a nice, straight, even seam all the way down to the end. Once you get to the bottom of this side, we're going to turn round and come back all the way down the other side. Again, taking an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the side back tacking at the start and the finish. Now that we have a strap and we have tabs on our zip, we're going to attach them both to one of our sides of our bag. Make sure that your strap is all facing the same direction and then we're going to either pin or clip it to the bag panel. I'm using pins for this just because I prefer them. Oh, and I pin this one inch from the side. Now place the zip over the bag panel and the strip straps with right side spacing. I use clips to attach this and you should have half an inch gap on each side. Now attach your zip to the panel with the straps sandwiched between taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and stopping when we get to our zip pull remembering to back tack and at the start and the finish. When we reach the zip pull stop with your needle down and lift your foot up. We're then going to pull the 
the zip pull out of the way so we can get past it. Now to continue to sew all the way along the side of the zip until you get to the zip tabs at the end and stop when you reach the end of the zip tab. To attach the lining I lay my bag down patchwork side facing down then I put the lining over the zip on the opposite side. I then flip it over and I should have my lining right side facing my bag right side and I pin to the top side of the zip or in my case I clip to the top side of the zip matching up as I go along making sure that I have half an inch over at the side for my seam allowance when I do the side seams and I'm going to sew across the top and I just check that I've got it right always a good idea to check before you sew right now we need to sew our lining on and remember to start half an inch from the edge don't start right at the edge you need to leave a gap at the edge for your side seam start by back tacking and then taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance so all the way to the end remembering that when we get to the zip pull to stop with our needle down lift up our presser foot and move the zip out of the way so that we can then sew past it and continue to the end back tacking when we get to the end and remember to finish one inch from the end not right to the end press both sides pushing the fabric away from the zip. Next, top stitch along the edge about a quarter of an inch away from the zip. Remembering to back tack at the start and the finish. Next, with right sides facing, pin the other bag panel, the other side of the bag panel to the zip, clipping or pinning across the edge, making sure that you've got half an inch either side of the zip. As I said before this is your seam allowance for when you do the side seams you don't want to include the zip in it. Now sew from half an inch from each side taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance back tacking at the start and the finish and remembering to stop when we reach the zip pull move the zip pull out of the way and then carry on sewing to the end or at least half an inch from the end. Now to add the second piece of lining fabric. I put it, I lay it out the way I want it to go and then I flip it over to the other side and then line it up with the zip, flip it over and it should be on the right side. I then use my clips to clip all along the top and as with the other side I'm going to turn it over and sew over the stitching I've already done, taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and starting half an inch in from the side and stopping half an inch in at the end and remembering to move the zip so we can pass the zip as we did before. Now I give both sides a quick press pushing the fabric away from the zip on both sides. Now top stitch at the side of your zip taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now open the bag zip and make sure that the bag strap is in the centre of the bag so it's not going to get caught into any seam allowance and trim off any ends that you find. Now take both patchwork panels with right side facing and push the zip tab towards the lining side and then we're going to squeeze the two sides together and clip keeping the lining fabric out of the way and then carry on clipping or pinning all the way down one side and then go to the other side and do exactly the same and pin all the way down that side then start sewing in the top right hand corner making sure you pull the lining fabric back and we're going to start just to the side of the zip tab. You mustn't sew over the zip tab, just to the side of it. Now starting at the top right hand corner, taking a half inch seam allowance, sew all the way round your bag, remembering to back tack at the start and the finish. The fabric is quite thick at the two top corners, so be very careful when sewing there. Then 
clip the corners on both sides. Now pin or clip the lining together, starting at the tricky corners, which won't be as bad as the main part of the bag, and carry on pinning or clipping all the way around. And mark a three to four inch opening at the bottom of the lining so we won't sew between these two points. Starting at the top right hand corner, taking a half inch seam allowance, sew down one side and across the bottom until you reach the mark that you left for the opening. You then need to start on the opposite side and sew all the way down and across the bottom until you meet, reach the other mark that you left for the opening. Now clip the two bottom corners and now we can turn it the right side out. So find the opening and basically pass all the fabric out through this opening. So I start with the lining and then gradually push everything out through the hole we left in the lining. Now give your bag a quick press starting with the lining and making sure that the opening you left is neatly turned under and then carry on pressing the rest of the bag until you're happy with it. All that remains to be done is to close the opening. So I've already clipped it and I'm going to sew a very narrow seam allowance of about an eighth of an inch across the opening. I'm going to back tack at the start and the finish and we're done. If you prefer, you could slip stitch the opening closed Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.